tuning in to Miami Television News. I'm Katie Espelita, and I'm here today for our annual roundtable discussion with the Associated Student Government Presidential and Vice Presidential candidates for the 2014-2015 school year. I'm here with the Presidential candidates Cole Tyman, Luke Cohen, and Kyle Heath. Thanks for joining us in the studio today. The guidelines of today's discussion will be a question based with each candidate having 90 seconds to answer each question as fully as they can. Now starting off, we're going to start a little broad kind of going overarching goal. So if elected president for the following school year, what is your overarching goal for the term in office? And more specifically, what's going to be the atmosphere of your leadership? And what can the student body expect if you are elected? Cole? Absolutely. Katie, thank you so much. And thank you to MTM, MTN for hosting this debate. In terms of what Natalie and I want to do as student body president and vice president, we're running as the voice of Miami. I've served in ASG for three years, and as much of the great work that we've done, one thing I've noticed is that for all the great ideas ASG comes up with, we don't reach out to the students enough. And so we want to make sure that we are the voice of students. We want to make sure that students are really getting their voice heard. And if there's a problem that they have on campus, that we can really make sure that that problem is solved. In terms of our leadership style, uh, I myself have served as a cabinet member in ASG for two years as the Secretary for On-Campus Affairs, and I've tried to deliver results, and I would have the same expectation from myself, my Vice President, and the entire ASG cabinet, as well as our Senators. I want to make sure that people are really getting things done. That's why one of the requirements we're going to put on our cabinet members is that each week they have to attend one student organization event per week. That means they can go out, get a sense of what student orgs really want, and let student orgs know what ASG is doing and give them the chance to contribute and see if this is really something that students want and changed. In terms of what students can expect from us in our time in office, they can expect results. In my time in, ISG, in, in ASG, I think I've been one of the most effective cabinet members. I've gotten parking lots moved to 6 p.m. starting next year so that students can park on campus uh, for their club meetings. I've gotten the Pulley Diner and Armstrong Student Center open 24 hours a day, the Emporium Market open 24 hours a day, and the Greystone Market, as a freshman, I got that open till 10 o'clock at night. And so overall, what they can expect from that and I is results. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. Thank you for hosting this. Um, Miami, Mike and I goal is to help you achieve your goal. Year after year, I feel as though the student body has promised a lot of change, and quite frankly, I don't think I've seen enough change. Um, I believe that we have a set of realistic goals that we can accomplish with a lot of hard work and a lot of passion, and that's exactly what we have. Our, mi our mission is MTN. It's making more classes available, taking those tailgates that are newly implemented next year to a whole nother level, and initiating a Miami morning report, which would essentially inform the students and keep them interested as to what's going, around, going on around campus, and perhaps even globally. However, I feel as though our main feature for our campaign is being real with the people. I feel as though that the voice has not been heard nearly enough of our students, and I feel as though that we need to do a better job of listening to them and actually being there to absorb what's going on. As for myself, I have not been on ASG for any amount of years, which I actually think benefits me because I've been a part of the normal population. So I feel as though I get a better sense for what's going on around campus. Being that I'm a student myself, I am not up here. I'm with everybody else down here. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for hosting us. Um, for those of you at the Armstrong Student Center, thank you for watching. And just keep in mind that this is one of the first times that student content has actually been shown on this TV in the Student Center. Now, as far as our overarching goals, Colleen and I have come up with a simple 3C platform. And that's communicating, collaborating, and creating. Our goals is to make, for creating is to make the student body a more transparent student body. And our second one is collaborating, is to make students come together and work together, student organizations come together and work together, that sporting events and athletics and big organizations and small organizations come together and work together to create stronger events for the student body. In thus creating a stronger student body, a more cohesive student body, a, where students come together and help each other out and have a mentality of how, how can I help you help me mentality. As far as our leadership goes, Colleen and I have been very involved in ASG. 
My time as Vice President of Student Organizations, I've done a lot to make the process more efficient and to help student organizations as much as possible. I've created this, the funding process to be more efficient, to put out an Excel document so that student organizations Okay, and so many of our platforms offer up suggestions to make student life easier here at Miami. And uh, when going through your platforms, I saw the additional workout equipment that you guys offered up, as well as making classes easier for registration and the uh, collaboration between the student organizations. So kind of elaborate, how feasible are these? Uh, what's the process of implementing these? And kind of go more in depth to tell uh, the viewers what these are. Absolutely. Um, so our idea for the rec center, one thing that we know, and from the many times that you can tell I've spent at the rec, I know that lines are always packed. Um, students come up to me constantly and say, this is a really big problem. I don't want to have to wait 20, 30, 40 minutes up to an hour for a treadmill uh, or an elliptical or a bike. And so what we've suggested is that there are a variety of spaces around campus called overflow spaces. And so when students come onto campus and we have too many students, we, um, these students are put into these overflow spaces for only about up to a, a month at the most. And so we see a really good opportunity here because these exist all throughout campus and pretty much one in every quad. And so when they're not being used for that overflow purpose, what we see is an opportunity to put treadmills, put bikes, put ellipticals into those spaces. Uh, we've already had conversations with Doug Curry, who's uh, in charge of the rec center, and Brian Woodruff, who's the head of housing. Um, I had a conversation with them a few months back, and, and this is something that you know definitely we'd like to look at going forward. Because it's going, it, the reason we want to go forward with this is not just will it make lines more convenient at the rec for off-campus students, it'll also be more convenient and safer for, for on-campus students so that they don't have to trek from all the way from East Quad or North Quad at 11 o'clock at night back from the rec. Well, I actually think my platform uh, draws a parallel to his as well. I think that we already expanded the rec. We did a lot of construction there already, and I think things are going much better there. I personally go there as much as I can, not as much as I should, but I have a pretty easy time doing that. Therefore, I think we should pump the brakes on that for just a second and about making classes more available. Personally, I don't like taking summer classes and the only reason why I have to is because I can't get into certain classes that I wish to get into. And from there, I can't even fulfill my major. And I know that happens to a lot of students. As a result, we want to develop a, a, a plan that would you know, open up some extra time slots to get into those classes, and we want to bring that strong faculty ratio back. Feasibility-wise, I think that making classes more available is extremely possible. A little hard work, we can get that done. As for the faculty ratio, that's going to take a lot of hard work, and that might go after, if we are elected, that term. Thank you. So what are the steps that you're going to take to is it hiring more teachers or more faculty? How well, actually, 20 years ago, the amount of faculty here was doubled. And I think that's unacceptable. I think that firing or letting go of certain faculty members is kind of foolish because we pride ourselves on our academics and how intellectual we actually can be from the classroom setting. With that being said, I just ran out of time. Thank you. Okay, so our platform ideas are extremely feasible and probably the most feasible. So the three C's again, communicating, collaborating, and creating. What we plan to do is make ASG more transparent to the student body. We want to give the students, because the biggest thing that I see on campus is that students really don't know what ASG is there for. They don't understand that it exists, they don't know it's there, and it's because we tend to silo ourselves. ASG does, and IFC does, and Panhel does, and um, organizations, they all silo themselves. By making communication um, available to the students and letting them know actually what ASG does, what they're a resource for, and how you can reach them to get your ideas put into action is the biggest issue that we need, that we need to do right now. These, these ideas are great that are, have been said right now, but these are ideas of one and two students. We need to get, make sure that the entire student body is being heard, that there is a resource for them that if they have an idea, that they can come and tell us. So our idea is to kind of create a 
we the people, but make it I am Miami. Kind of a petition, an online petition base where students can go on, create an idea, a petition idea, and then Miami students can log on, and if they like that idea, sign the petition, and then every week, if it reaches a certain threshold, ASG will review that petition and give a response. Okay, and when going through each of your platforms, I feel like they each individually had a wow factor, something that was very attractive to the voters. And like I said, it was very different for both. So that's gonna be the tuition freeze, um, the scaled parking tickets, and the Miami Morning Report. Uh, looking at these, I was impressed. I was looking at them. Um, again, how realistic are these? They all seem really great, but can you implement these? Can you put these into action? And how are you gonna do that? And how are we gonna be, as a student body, see results? Absolutely. Oh. Um, so in terms of the, the scaled parking tickets, I've worked with parking and transportation since my freshman year. Ben Spillman is someone who I consider a pretty good friend. He's the lieutenant of the Miami University Police who's in charge of parking and transportation. And this is an idea that I'm bringing forward because it's new. It's something that we probably haven't heard before, but it's a problem that students have across campus. When you get a $75 ticket and you worked hard as a tour guide or in the Armstrong Student Center at one of the dining locations and you work as a student employee, to get $75 for simply making a mistake, that's wrong. And so the reason we're going after it is because in a meeting the other day, I heard someone in parking and transportation say, I understand most parking tickets come from students being confused. I also was with parking and they said that they don't want their revenue source coming from something they can't predict. They can't predict how many parking tickets they have. So I think if we can look at other sources of raising revenue for the parking office, such as you know, raising faculty parking passes, which only cost $30 for an entire year, then that's absolutely feasible. And so what we're, we're not saying that the parking office wouldn't collect any revenue, but what we're hoping is that we can create a system in which the first ticket would be something like a warning and then 25 and then 50 and then 75 and if you continue to get tickets then it'll be $75 but that way we're not punishing the students who you know who just made a mistake once or twice and we're really going after the people who are just constantly making the mistakes and abusing the system but overall everyone is benefiting from the fact that their first parking tickets aren't going to cost an excessive amount of money and because of the relationships that Natalie and I already have with various administrators on campus I think it's absolutely feasible. As for the Miami Morning Report, feasibility was, it's done. It's an unbelievable way to just roll out of your bed. You don't even have to get out of bed. Reach over, get your phone, log on to your email. You've got a newspaper waiting for you in the morning. Local news, weather, what to wear, sports, Miami sports, global sports, you name it. Customize your own one. I personally will stay up at night and make your newspaper, Miami Morning Report, send it to you in the morning. Not everyone's gonna get it, they're gonna have to subscribe. Everybody can get it, sorry. You have to subscribe for it. It is, uh, it is very easy to do this and I think it will help out a lot. And I think a lot of people will like it. I think a lot of people will not only be informed, but more so interested. Because not only is it local and global news, you get a sense for what's going on around you. Because once again, really the students don't have that much of a voice. Some of them, a lot of them really don't really care as to what is going on around here, and that's because they haven't been given the opportunity really to care. But with this Miami Morning Report, you know what's going on. You want to get engaged. You want to be involved with it. And I think it's a great way to just keep everybody informed and it's keep them interested. As far as the tuition freeze goes, that's already in the works, and that's already been um, discussed with the financial advisor uh, here at Miami, and it's already in the process of becoming um, implemented. Um, so ASG has been very proactive with this um, and getting this, the ball rolling on this. The point that I want to make is that yes, that is, a, that is a very attractive idea, and it's not going to help any student right now. That's part of our creating platform. That's going to help Miami, future Miami students. That's, Colleen and I want to leave Miami a better place than we found it, and that's, that's part of the things that we're going to start advocating for are the future things that we can help future Miami students, like a tuition freeze. Now, these other ideas are great. Um, the parking ticket thing, it's already happening. ASG's already discussed this. It's, a, it's in the works of, of happening already. So this isn't an idea of one person. This is a collective idea. And that's exactly what Colleen and I are going to come and do and be a leader and facilitate these conversations and get other Miami input on this. It should be frustrating to many students out there that didn't get to put their input in on the parking situations or other um, 
concerns that they have on campus. That's what we're trying to do is create a more cohesive, transparent student body and a more transparent ASG so that students can come and voice their concerns so that something can happen. Okay. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for our presidential candidates. Thank you all again for coming in. After the break, I'm going to sit down with the three VP candidates to discuss their anticipated role in ASG, as well as continue the discussion on their hopes as leadership. Tired of getting news you can't relate to? Want programs made for students just like you? Then tune in to MUTV on Channel 15 to find out what's happening on your campus. MUTV offers a wide variety of shows suitable for everybody. Whether you're into catching up on sports, daily events, or seeing the latest work of your peers, MUTV is the place to be. And if you missed out on seeing your favorite speaker or event, have no fear, MUTV will be there to catch the action. Made by students for students. Yeah, MUTV. Hi, and welcome back to Miami Television News. We just spoke with the presidential candidates for the Associate Student Government, and I would like to welcome the vice presidential candidates to the studio. I'm here with Natalie Beda, Michael Barth, and Colleen Ryan. Welcome, guys. So I'm going to kind of ignore you, Colleen, for the set, for, or I'm sorry, Natalie, for the first one, because your two platforms, I know they both included almost changing the social atmosphere of Miami students. So that's going to be with the tailgating and the concerts and also with the increased uh, excitement about Miami athletics. So Colleen, tell us, we all know Miami does lack kind of that enthusiasm for its sports. What are you guys going to do? What's your plan? Well, at first, I think it's great that um, student leaders have personal relationships with administrators at Miami. But really, Miami should be about student leadership and what happens with what the students' ideas, what they want, and then how the student leaders can implement them into student life. And so some ideas about um, tailgating have come about because we don't have all the best athletics, but we should still have excitement for the athletics. And this kind of goes back to the collaboration idea of our platform is it doesn't really matter what the team is, what they're playing, or what the score is. It's about the excitement and the support that we have for them to create a stronger, much more collaborative student um, and athletic personality. And so I think that having increased excitement for tailgates and things like that, um, and bringing students down to Millette in the fall to show off what they can do in their own organizations, as well as supporting athletics, can just create a more cohesive atmosphere. Okay. And Michael, can you explain uh, more in depth what your platform entails to increase that tailgating aspect? Okay. Michigan State, Penn State, those are the schools that separate us from the big schools. So what we want to do is in, in, um, have concerts, uh, philanthropy events, and just bring the school together and bring more school spirit, bring more people to the football games, hopefully even win a MAC championship. So we think tailgating is a huge part and can bring the student body together. And so we want to do all that we can to just unite the student body through tailgates. Okay. And kind of adding you back in. Sorry about that. Uh, a big issue, which is, was discussed before by Kyle, um, transparency between the government and the student body. I think it's, I mean, it's an issue right now with us and our national government. What can you do to entail that the student body that elects you knows what's going on, knows the process and the progress that you've made as the leadership? And how can you keep them up to date with the follow through of you know, the promises that we're making today before we get elected? Of course, thank you. Um, I, we, or Cole, excuse me, <laughs> Cole already discussed how we wanted to make sure that um, cabinet and Senate, the senators are going to different organizations and seeing what they're doing and what they want us to be doing and also inform them about what we're doing and what we are, what's upcoming, like upcoming events that are happening. And with that, um, my, my position as the VP would be to make sure that the cabinet is doing that. And um, just the students will be able to see our ideas come alive. And that's, that's the big thing with us, with our previous um, experience in ASG and with our relationships with administration and stuff, we think that we're able to, we're going to be able to make these ideas re very a reality very soon, and people will be able to see that. So um, basically, Luke and myself, our big thing is being genuine. We want to implement things that we see are realistic. And we think by implementing the tailgate, the Miami Morning Report, and making classes more available will not only help the student body, 
but will bring the campus together in ways, um, in so many different ways. So we think tailgating is a huge part of this, and by speaking at all these different clubs, we've gotten a feel of what students want to see, to see done, like um, getting girls uh, a couple hours at the rec, tailgates was a huge one, a lot of clubs said that, and we just think we can do a lot of things that are realistic that will help us in the future. I think it's so easy to say that we want transparency. We hear every single year with every single student body election. Um, but it's really how you're going to implement it. And Kyle and I have kind of looked back at the past um, years at Miami, and we kind of want to bring back the President's Coalition and get the presidents of each student organization together as often as we can or as often as we see necessary and have them give their ideas, what's happening in all of their student organizations, what they want to see changed, what they want to see improved, and how the student government leaders can do that for them. It kind of will all come together to make that co collaboration strong while still keeping up the communication of the student body. And these presidents can be of any single organization, whether it be Greek life or athletics, like club sports, or even just in majors, like the accountant club and things like that. Okay, and wrapping up today, we're gonna give you about two minutes. You can touch on anything new. I know there are a lot more dimensions to your platforms. So if you wanna to touch on something new, or you can retrace back and go into another issue a little more in depth if it wasn't covered fully the first time. So we're just gonna go through again, okay? Sure. So one of my favorite um, platform points that we have is peer advising. So I don't know about you, Katie, but I don't even know who my academic advisor is. Um, I'm a biology major. I plan on going to medical school once I graduate, and I don't even know if I am able to graduate on time at this point. I don't know who to go talk to and whether or not I'm taking the right classes. And we want to pilot this, I, this new idea where um, upperclassmen students who have the same major as us are kind of a peer advisor. So they are able to tell you what class to take, what, what teachers to take. You know, I don't want to rate my professor.com <laughs> all the time because that's not as efficient. Um, you know, they'll be able to give you firsthand advice because they already experienced this rather than the academic advisors that, one, don't reach out to us, and two, don't, aren't students. So they don't really know how to, like, what classes to take, when to take them, um, and also, a lot of students don't even know what to do with their major once they graduate. And that will be, and peer advising would allow upperclassmen to be able to give advice to these two students on steps they can take with their major outside of Miami. Um, I think the biggest thing for us is making classes more available. I think that's our um, most important platform. We met with an economic advisor here that's been here for 40 years. and. He said the number of faculty, like Luke said, has um, decreased by half since then, and we just think that's unacceptable. They're building new buildings all the time, and the faculty's going down along with it, and so, and they're raising the GPA, so when you get up at 5, 6 a.m., and you're scrambling to register for classes, and you don't get in the ones you want or need, um, it just makes everything so much more har harder for students. Like. Like Luke said, you have to take summer school classes or take an extra semester like I might have to do. Don't tell my parents that yet. But um, So we just think that's a huge thing. We think it will benefit every student, um, myself included. Um, I mean, I'm sure you guys have all had that same problem. So we think that's our biggest thing, and um, that's our main platform. Okay. So. Kyle and I are confident that Miami needs stronger communication, collaboration, and then in order to create a better Miami. Um, so through these three things, we know that so many other things can happen. Through communication, we can easily have more ideas of more students who aren't even involved in certain or organizations to have a central location on the hub to give us their ideas and things that they want to hear and that we can bring to student government through our weekly reports and give out to the rest of the senators and see what they think and they can talk to their um, members that they live within their quads and things like that. And then this can have collaboration because we're not only reaching out to student organizations, but we're also reaching out to those students who aren't as involved, who might want to get involved and don't know how, or are happy with not being involved, but they still have ideas for improvement. And then this will create a better Miami for everyone because it will create a better Miami for the way we live today, but also for the future Miami students, so we can ensure that we leave it better than we found it. Okay, well I'd like to thank you guys again for coming in, and thanks for joining us in MTN. Uh, voting for the primary election will be on April 9th and 10th, and the general elections, if needed, will be held on April 16th and 17th. You can vote on the Hub anytime during those days. As always, don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Miami TV News. 
and we will be posting the link to, the, to vote on both of our pages each day. Again, thanks again for tuning in for Miami Television News. I'm Katie Esplita. Have a great week.